What is up, people? My name is Daryl, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the Bloom plugin. Now, the Bloom plugin you actually get with purchase of the Divi theme. And I did just make a new Divi theme tutorial. So, for those of you who want to use the Bloom plugin, today in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about the Bloom plugin. In fact, I use it on my personal websites. Now, the great thing about the Bloom plugin is that it actually gives you statistics based off of your, um, your opt in forms. So, right here, you can kind of see that we have the active opt ins. Uh, right here it says widgets and then it gives you a certain amount of impressions it shows you how many people have actually signed up and it also gives you a conversion rate as well and um it actually has some of the best designs as well so on my blog section right here where it says join for freebies and news someone can actually see it and simply just put their email address and sign up and it's really fast and simple so i'll just put in like a super smash bros champion or super smash bros at aol.com and click on subscribe and when they click on subscribe right there, uh, that email will go to my MailChimp list so I can you know, email them later. So it's a great plugin. You get it for free when you purchase the Divi theme. If you don't have the Divi theme, I will include a link to purchase Divi in the description below. Um, even the, the Bloom plugin alone is really good for it. So right here, I'll click on download and just kind of give you an example of how to use this plugin. And I'll show you that I'm using MailChimp and we'll kind of, I'll show you how to use MailChimp with it, et cetera. So let's go to my dummy website right here. That's the Monarch plugin. That's what that was. It was I was messing around with that earlier. I had a tutorial on that actually. So uh, over here, I have Bloom. So once you upload the Bloom plugin, you'll get this icon right here on the left side that says Bloom, and it says opt-in forms, email accounts, statistics, and import and exports. So right here, I'll click on opt-in forms. So you have this screen right here, and you have different you know different features. You have you know the settings. You have enable updates. That's where you're going to put in your API key, your opt-in stats. You have your um, your email accounts. You can import and export your Bloom settings for other websites, and then this is the home. So what we first want to do is probably create an opt-in, right? You want to create one. So right here, I'll click on New Opt-in, and we have different kinds. So this one right here would be a pop-up. This one right here would fly in on the bottom right of the websites. This right here would show below the posts. Uh, this right here would show in line. This right here is locked content, meaning uh, if you want someone to keep reading your blog post, they will need to subscribe to the blog post. I'm sorry, to the uh, Bloom plugin in order to um, see the rest of the content. And then right here is widgets. So I'll go ahead and select a widget really quickly. So right here, just go ahead and give your uh, your your thing a name. So I'll put a widget right here, widgets. Now right here it says select an email provider. Now the great part about the Bloom plugin is that it supports several type of um, email marketing companies. But the one that's most popular, that the one I use, is probably MailChimp. So MailChimp right here. Now, right here, we'll click on add an account. And then right here, we'll click on add accounts. So this is where you actually need to give them your account name and your API key. So for instance, over here, um, I need to give them my account name in order to register. So I'll go to my profile right here. And then over settings, I think it is under the extra, the API keys. And then I'll go ahead and just simply go ahead and copy this. And then I will paste it over here. And then I'll go ahead and put in my username and authorize it. All right, so now it's actually fetching the information from MailChimp. So you can have different providers. It'll work for all providers. Um, and then once you actually get verified and it's and it finds your um, your MailChimp account or whatever email account you're using, you can actually select the list right here. So right here I have Daryl Wilson. These are all the lists I have for my email marketing. Um, here I'll put uh, Daryl's discounts. Um, you can also include the API address if you want to do that. So right now I'll click on next and choose your design. So right here are the, uh, are the templates they have, and they have tons of beautifully designed templates. These are really, really nice, really good. I have a blue one because you know blue always shows trust. You know it's it's what all the banks use. You ever notice that? Uh, here I'll just select something really basic. I'll just select this purple one right here, and then click on next customize. So right here it's like what do you want it to say? So subscribe to our newsletter. You can go ahead and put that in there or change that. So subscribe to our subscribe to our. Um, email or maybe newsletter is better because uh, email just sounds really boring. So newsletter, I'll put newsletter actually. Uh, opt-in message. So join our mailing list to receive the latest news and updates from our team. All right. Uh, right here, you can have the image orientation. So you can place the image below the text or you can have it above the text. So over here, you can actually have it below the text or above the text. So that's what that option means right there. Uh, going back over here, 
Now you can also have your own image as well. So you might here want to go ahead and put in your logo because um, you can use the defaults. I think the default looks good, but maybe you want to go ahead and put in your logo right there, right? The image load animation, you can have it slide up, uh, whatever you want. But since this is a widget, it's not going to have any animations. Now if this were a pop-up or something else, it probably would have an animation. Um, over here, you can kind of select the header fonts, the text color, uh, all that other stuff right here. Uh, you can actually give the form setup a name. So here you can say uh, you want your first name and then also you know your email, subscribe, or you can just put no name field if you just want the email. So over here, you can see that I just have the email. Let me go ahead and refresh the page. I just have the email, but you can always put the front, the first name. And that also is probably better because when people email someone, they always address them by their first name to kind of, you know, I kind of think that's really annoying, but I understand why they do it. Like LinkedIn, when they were like, Daryl, something happened. I'm like, dude, don't call, like, leave me alone. You know, like, like, what do you love with me? Like, it just sounds so like uh, intimate, you know? So, uh, but a lot of companies do that. So they do address by the first name over there. So uh, you can actually just put, um, you know, single name. So that's just their first name. And that actually go to your MailChimp account. Uh, you can use custom fields as wants, but since I don't have any, I'm not going to select that. Uh, right here, you can kind of select the different styles. So the form edge style, you can go ahead and select that right there. And the form footer text as well, you can select that. But, um, you know, uh, we send out an email once a month, we won't spam you, you know, something we only send an email once a month. So we won't spam. There's something like that, something to just kind of encourage them, you know. Uh, here we have uh, the success text message. So you have successfully subscribed. And then right here, I'll click on next success action. So you can actually choose to just say success, like, okay, thank you for signing up. Or you can choose to redirect them to a URL if they decided to sign up. So maybe you want to provide them a, a page for a download or something like that. So if you redirect them to our URL, you can put the URL out there. So saying, if you sign up for our email address, we'll give you a free copy of this or that or something like that. So that's what the redirect to URL would mean. Uh, me personally, I'm just gonna leave it on success message and click on save and exit. All right, so I have my, my form created. Let's go ahead and apply it now. Let's go ahead and add it to our website. So I'm gonna uh, apply it as a widget first, and then we'll do the uh, the pop-up as well. So appearance and widgets. So I wanna add it to my sidebar. So I'm gonna go ahead and find Bloom and simply just drag it over here. I'll drag it on the top right here. Now right here, we'll go ahead and select the option, which is widget. Remember how we created widget? So right here, I'll click on save. And now we go to our blog page, the Bloom plugin will then appear. So right here, blog and WP friends. And then you can see right here, subscribe to, you know, I should probably change the color of that. That looks really ugly, you know, and probably, you know, you can kind of mess around with it a little bit. Maybe that color is not good for it because it kind of looks eh, right? It looks pretty ugly, but right here, subscribe to our newsletter. And then right here, you can see the, the name and the email. And then on the footer text, we'll only send once uh, a month. So uh, maybe here I'll put uh, Daryl Wilson. And then here I'll put, um, you know, I don't know. Oh, Smash Brothers Champion. Smash Brothers Champ. I, I really got to buy that email. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the Smash Brothers Champion, you know, so. And then click on subscribe. And then voila. So now it's going to go ahead and go right to my MailChimp account. Pretty easy, pretty amazing, right? And remember, you also get statistics. So you want to find out which one's better performing. I find out the ones that perform the best are the pop-ups. People really do use the pop-ups. So over here, let's see if I can look at statistics. Now, I actually set it to record every three hours. So in the settings, you'll need to adjust that. So you can select it to pull the API every hour, uh, every two hours, every three hours, but I just selected every hour. So now that, now that we made one, let's go ahead and make one more. Let's just kind of give you a little bit more um, familiarity of the, um, the form. So we have a widget, right? Now right here, I'll click on new opt-in and we'll do pop-up. All right, and then we'll, right here, I'll select pop-up right here. Select the email provider. I'll go ahead and select the MailChimp right here. Oh, nope, Mad Mimi. What is Mad Mimi? I've never even heard of that one. That's a new one. Here, I'll select my accounts. And then I'll select this one right here. All right, so now I wanna go ahead and design it. So maybe right here, I'll select subscribe. This one right here. This one looks really nice. Oh no, newsletter, newsletter. There we go. That's, this one looks really good right there. We'll select that one. Uh, scrolling down here, I'll click on next and customize. Subscribe to our uh, giveaways. There we go, That that's better, giveaways. 
Uh, Opt-in message, uh, we have this right here, same thing. Uh, we have the uh, image URL, the same options again as usual. Uh, the border style, so there are some other more features with different, um, I guess you can say, um, options. So depending on what you pick, they'll give you different styles of options. So uh, I know that this one actually has a um, display settings or a little bit more, yeah, here we go. So the display settings, so these right here are basically saying, okay, so how do you want this to display? You know, uh, what conditions do you want this to display on? So right here, first we have the animation. So you can have it flip, you can have it bounce, etc. Um, you can go ahead and select whatever option you want to do there. Um, over here it says delay. So you put right here trigger after time delay. So how many seconds do you want this to appear after someone has visited your website? Or trigger after commenting, trigger after scrolling, trigger after purchasing, trigger on click. You know, all these options right here are different ways on how you can uh, make your um, your pop-up show up. Maybe right here, I wanna say after 10 seconds, I want this to display. And you can display on everything, on posts, on blog page, etc. Maybe you wanna put it on posts and homepage. I think that's kind of ideal. You don't wanna put it on every single post or every page because that just gets really, really tedious. But they have that option. You know, if you wanna spam your customers and piss them off, you can go ahead and do that too, you know? So uh, also they have display on these pages. So if you put pages, you can say, you know what? I only want it to display on this page and on this page. You know, I do not want to display it on this page. And you can do the same exact thing for your posts. So say for instance, you have 30,000 posts. You're gonna say, I only want to display, to display on these certain posts, on that post, etc." So that's what basically this function is. It basically restricts the plugin from popping up on certain pages and it allows it to pop up on certain pages. So that is something that you might want to, um, you know, mess around with because why would you have it display on your contact page? That makes no sense, right? They're always gonna contact you. You don't really need their email because they're gonna contact you anyway. So usually I'd probably disable that on contact pages, right? So uh, I have it on home page and I have it on uh, posts and there you go, posts. So here you can kind of see the um, the power of this plugin where you can kind of just put it on any sort of condition you want, depending on what you're you're trying to go for. So right here, I'll click on next success action and I'll just say success message, save and exit, and there you go. So now the pop-up is there. Let's go ahead now and check it out. Now it might not work, so I might actually have to use this on a different one. That's for Monarch see right here because we're an admin there he goes so subscribe to our giveaways all right so there is the um there is the uh, the pop-up i'll click on subscribe and voila successfully subscribed now that is probably the best email opt-in out there in fact i use it on my website i think it's great uh, you can see it has a lot of statistics on it so it records everything it lets me know which one's converting better so here you can kind of see that the widgets gets around 8,700 impressions, but it's only converted 41 people. However, the pop-up right there has gotten double the amount of impressions, but it has a way better conversion rate than the blog section right there. So you can you can kind of uh, understand the difference, and that's why the Bloom plugin is just so good. You know, it, it's really good. It lets you know how many subscribers you get per week, your conversion rates, it gives you the impressions, it gives you all sorts of really good information. So um, be sure to check out my newest Divi theme tutorial. Um, I just talked about all the new features because Divi is always evolving. It's always adding new stuff. So I did basically make a tutorial on that. And for those of you who have purchased Divi, you do get the Bloom and the Monarch plugin included in your purchase. So be sure to use those and take advantage of those because they're really, really good, okay? So um, if you have any other questions, put them in the comments below. I think I covered pretty much everything here, all right? Uh, my name is Daryl Wilson and I will see you all in the next video.